Let the church say amen for this great praise team this morning. Brother Caleb on the lead this morning. Amen. What a joy. What a joy. Thank you. Grace and joy to you, family. Grace and joy to you, Pastor. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. I don't know what I would do if I couldn't have a God I couldn't feel some of the time. Amen. I'm glad you're here today. It's preaching time. And we are walking through the great book of Luke. So thank you for all of the family being online and on land. Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11, verses 24 through 26 today. If you can stand in honor of God's word, we sacredly request that you do that for us. I understand if those legs ain't working. All right, but Luke 11 24 through 26. Thanks all of you being online today. We are the New Beginnings Church, an expository teaching and preaching church, and we believe mm -hmm. in preaching through the entire book of the Bible, books and chapters at a time. Family? And we invite you to join us in our exegetical work through this text. Luke 11, verse 24. Jesus says, when an unclean spirit mm -hmm. goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest, and finding none, he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it swept and put in order but then he goes and he takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter and they dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first amen I'm going to tag this message today, what you need to know about demonic activity. What you need to know about demonic activity. Look at somebody if you can and tell them, neighbor, hey, neighbor. don't sleep on this one. Because the devil don't want you to know what his next move is. You may be seated. Come on, Pastor. Beloved, on last week, we learned that it's the year of ministry opposition in the life of the Christ. Come on. We learned that the haters were on the move. We learned that they were lurking everywhere. And they were consistently speaking out against Jesus and opposing his message, his ministry, and his methods of kingdom building. You see, Jesus had just defeated the underworld that was at work in the life of a human being. And instead of the crowd celebrating this newfound freedom, uh, the haters began to discredit him. Come on. They rejected his person, right. his progress, uh -huh. and his power over the demonic. Jesus then, in that text, he schooled them on what they failed to understand about him and what they understand about or what they understood about the power he had over the evil one. Jesus said to them that Satan was a strong man who tried to guard his house, but one stronger than him came and defeated him on earth. And he wanted the haters in the crowd to know that if they were not working with him, they were working against him. And then we come to these words today. It's an intimate look at the mind of the demonic and, and, and what Jesus was willing to reveal to those who didn't even realize they were working to advance a satanic 
agenda of the underworld. So let's unpack this text today as Jesus illuminates our hearts and our minds that we may know, number one, the enemy's position. Number two, the enemy's plot. And number three, the enemy's plan. Y'all gonna help me? Let's look at the enemy's position, verse 24. Notice Jesus says, when an unclean spirit, what kind is he? Unclean. He's an unclean spirit. When he goes out of a man, that means he gets kicked out, he gets evicted. He goes through dry places. And he goes because he's seeking rest. Let's unpack this. Beloved, when you arrive at this text, we discover that the demon that had once possessed a person has now been evicted. He is what we call houseless. Okay. He had been dislodged from his dwelling inside of a human being. Now, first of all, the reader should understand that demons, according to scriptures, do not like to dwell in the atmosphere. Right, right, right. Demons don't like to live in buildings. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. Right. They like human yeah. beings. Yes, sir. In other words, according to scripture, they need a body. Yes. Yeah. Come on. They desire bodies. They love to dwell in people mm -hmm. where they can create havoc. Where they can destroy life. Where they can torture people. Watch this now. And mar the creation of God. You are made in the image of God. That's what yeah, they're yeah, after. Yeah, yeah. Um, to mar the image of God. Why? Well, I believe it's because people are made again in the image of God. And any time they can attempt to inflict hurt or harm, or even do damage to God's agenda in the earth, they aspire to do so. So here in this text, we see two things. Somebody holler, show me, Pastor. Show me. Number one, we see the demon's position is to dwell inside of human beings. And God's position is to kick them out. Come on now. Y'all catch it? Yeah. Number two, when they get expelled, they immediately go roaming for a new person to dwell in. Peter said they go to and fro seeking whom they may devour. And finally, you should know that demons, I like this part, Lady Trudy, they are not employers. They are employees. In now. other words, they work for a boss man named Satan. Y'all yeah. ain't here? Yeah. All demons, somebody say all of them, all of them. are subject to Satan. Mm -hmm. And they are in what I call, Elder Billings, a military line yeah, right. according to rank and structure. See, demons are foot soldiers. They're infantry spirits who work on a lower level than their ranking superior. Come on. They got to be organized in order to deal with God. Are y'all with me here? Yeah, yeah. Finally, their position is to cover as much ground as possible. They do as much warfare as they can in the everyday lives of human beings. Right, right, right. Here it is, their job, somebody say their job, their job. is to make people kill one another. Right. Come on. Their job yeah. is to make people hurt one another. Right. Their job yeah. is to make people disrespect uh -huh. one another. Yeah. Their job yeah. is to make people mistreat one another. Right, right. Their, job Their job is to make people discriminate mm. against one another. Come on. Their, job Their job is to influence evil behavior. Yeah. 
Asia to harass people, to cause them to abuse one another and to be unjust toward one another. And most of all, their job is to keep people from confessing that Jesus is the Christ. Y'all yes, in here? I'm trying to turn the light on because some of y'all think this election is about people. Come on, Satan is the prince and the power of the air. He's in control of these people in these positions and in these places. Now he's got to get permission from God. God has him on a long leash. And while he's on his leash, he is working these things that are happening in the atmosphere. He's just one being. He can't be everywhere at all times. So he's got to use his employees. Y'all right, right. in here? When I look at the evil activity in our world today, much of it is satanic related. And we can see the work of demonic influence in the lives of those who are in power and who deny the Christ. Yes, sir. We can see it in their lives. We see it, Lady Baldry, in their attitudes. We see it in their decisions. We see it in their unjust laws. We see it in their wicked behaviors. We see it in their financial decisions to oppress the poor. We see it in the influence that they have to make other people misbehave. We are in a war and the masses don't even realize that there is a real reality of satanic activity in a fallen world. In fact, many people are either what I call satanically harassed, wow. satanically possessed, yeah. or satanically influenced. You need to write that down. They're either harassed by the devil, possessed by the devil, or influenced by the devil. And they are actively doing the bidding of the evil one and don't even know it. Here it is. Jesus in this text is talking to the haters in this crowd who had just come against him because of their unbelief. They are opposing Jesus for setting a man free from a possessed spirit that was unclean. They themselves didn't even know, Brother Jameson, they were influenced. Wow by an evil one to oppose the work of the Holy One. Let me give you an example. I can remember working for law enforcement in the 1990s, Brother Terry, and I can remember receiving backlash because I cared about the criminals that I was arresting. I can remember arresting people and praying for people. I can remember detaining them and desiring to see them set free from their captor. Yes. I can remember being the jailer and then setting up Bible studies to help release the captive minds. And this work became opposed by those who didn't believe that every human being had the right to meet and worship God. Some of them even said that I had what was called as a conflict of interest. Some of them said you in the wrong field if you want to help lives. Some believe I was an anathema because I believe that there was evil beings at work in the world trying to destroy people made in the image of God. I was the laughing stock of my department. In fact, I, I want to stop by to remind you today, wasn't nothing wrong with me, something was wrong with them. Yeah. 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 They didn't have a kingdom worldview. And when you don't have a kingdom worldview, the only kind of worldview you can have is a secular worldview. Can I press my claim? There's only two types of people in the world, Ray. Believers and unbelievers. Come on now. 
and believers have a kingdom worldview and unbelievers have a secular worldview. I need to press my way through there. In fact, let me help somebody today. I want to remind you in this contagious, evil, and wicked political society that's trying to suck you in, you better be careful embracing a secular worldview. See, if your views don't value life, you might be influenced by the underworld. If your views are one-sided, you might be influenced by the underworld. If your views allow you to kill some and let others live, you might be influenced by the underworld. If your worldview don't believe that life is sacred from the womb to the tomb, you might be influenced by the underworld. If your views allow you to be privileged and others to suffer, you might be influenced by the underworld. If your views allow you to rank over others, support systems that oppress and abuse others, entrap and ensnare the poor or the powerless, you might be influenced by the underworld. If your views don't allow your Bible to talk about politics, you might be influenced by the underworld. If your views allow you to support the wicked because they look like you or help to maintain your income inequality, you might be influenced by the underworld. I feel like doing it today. If you don't believe that your sins matter too, and that you are just as sinful as the next man, then you've been influenced by the wicked one. If this is you, then your position is just as deadly as the demonic. Why? Because you too are being used to advance a wicked agenda in a fallen world. We've looked at the enemy's position. Let's look now at the enemy's plot. Okay. Is it me or y'all just feel like being quiet today? Thank you, Lady Trina. 24, same verse, verse B. Jesus said, this demon, as he gets kicked out of the house and finding none, after going through dry places, he says, I will return to my house from which I came. Now you know that's loaded. 25. And when he comes, he finds that house swept and put in order. Jesus in this text, Elder McBee, does something profound that blows my mind. Here he is revealing to those who have been influenced to think evil, act evil, believe evil, here he tries to explain to them to get them to understand how the evil one really works. Jesus cares enough for them to try to teach them what they themselves didn't know. Last week I told you that Jesus is is omniscient. That means he knows all things. And he is aware of what you and I don't know. So here he unveils the diabolical plot and demonic strategy for human possession and what happens when those yeah, demons lose ground or lose their dwelling places in the earth. Okay. Can I tell you, you ain't going to find this information in the library. You ain't going to find it at the university. You can't even Google this. Only place you can find it is in the mind of the omniscient one, who is Jesus the Christ, the word of the living God. Are y'all listening here? And what he says, he says demons, when they get evicted, watch this, they go house hunting. Come on now. Uh, And when they run out of options, 
They go back to the first landlord. Come on now. Why? Well, perhaps they were comfortable and knew lots of things about their host. Perhaps they knew that the host would let them occupy the space for a little or nothing. Perhaps they knew the host did not let a new tenant into that space. And if the house was not occupied by somebody greater than them, then they could easily renew the lease. This message by Jesus is profound new beginnings. And it's profound because he exposes what happens when the haters interrupt the work of the kingdom. Okay, okay, so let's keep it in context. You know we like context and culture. At the beginning of the passage, he was evicting a demon. They interrupted the eviction. Cause a disruption in the work of the kingdom and then Jesus has to tell them what it was they just did. He cast out the evil spirit and they came clowning. Now, now look at this. This man's body was now clean. Uh, but it needed to be filled with the Lord's presence. There you go. And so it could be occupied uh -huh. and free from demonic intrusion. See, you can't cast out a demon uh -huh. and not put the Lord in that place. Because if you don't put God in, the house is just clean. Here, he just sober for a little while. Y'all in here? Secondly, we learn about the demonic plot in this verse. It reveals that they coming back. And when they come back, they find the house clean. So what they do, Lady Trina, is they fortify themselves by going to get some roommates. Ever had to share that rent? They go and get some roommates. But watch this, they don't get any kind of roommates. They go get demons that's more deadly, more wicked, even more dastardly than themselves. And they bring them all together to move in and destroy the life of the human being. See, some of y'all playing with the devil like, I got this, I'm clean now. No. What a plot. What a picture of the demonic mind. Uh -huh. What a look at how the underworld thinks and behaves. Now why is Jesus sharing this? Well, I believe Jesus is sharing this, New Beginnings, so that you and I know how to deal with the evil one. I believe that Jesus is sharing this so that you and I know, watch this now, some people have more than one devil they're dealing with. Did y'all hear me here? Some people got multiple demons and they are in the fight of their lives. Some people, Reverend White, are dealing with stuff you can't even imagine. Come on now. Their hearts are wicked. Yeah, their head hears voices. Their flesh is out of control. Their attitudes and their thoughts can't know how to reason. They are influenced and harassed continually by satanic thoughts and images. Some people mm, can't help but be a racist. Some people can't help but think like darkness. Some people can't help but mistreat their brothers or their sisters. Some people can't help but be lustful. Some people can't help but be inebriated. Some people can't help but think perverse thoughts. Some people can't help but to mistreat babies. 
Some people can't help but to mistreat women, orphans, black folks, white folks, brown folks, fat folks, skinny folks, tall folks, short folks, rich folks, poor folks, anything with a folk on it. They can't help because they dealing with more than one devil. They can't help but create unjust systems and enslave the masses of generations for their profits and their gains. All I'm trying to say is some folks got more than a one devil problem. Some have been dominated by the underworld. And Jesus wants you and I to know what we're dealing with in this COVID-19 generation. Can I get a witness? Amen. He wants the haters in this crowd to know what they don't know. And he wants them, Lady Wilson, to be exposed to what I call is the doctrine of demonology. And that they may become aware so they won't become candidates of deception. I can remember wondering, Deacon Han, why my so-called brothers and sisters of the blue community didn't understand that the souls of people matter? I couldn't remember why people hated me and why the color of my skin caused somebody to be fearful. I couldn't, I couldn't fathom why my size and my stature made you afraid. Wow. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. When I had a star on my collar, just like you had. Yeah. I remember wondering why people thought the preacher was the enemy. I remember wondering why did people get upset, angry, disrespectful, Montre, because I tried to think like Christ, love like Christ, serve like Christ, and imitate Christ. Then I understood the power of the underworld is at work in every level of our community. And they are at work, watch this now, trying to oppose the work of the kingdom. See, if you are doing the work of the kingdom, you supposed to catch hell. Oh, no. Come on. If you have named the name of Christ, you supposed to be, Ray, on the hit list. Can I say some more? Y'all promise not to get upset? When I worked at the Christian University, I caught all kind of hellish activity. And I caught it from religious employees. Those who called themselves working in the name of the Lord. They opposed my ideas and I was the university pastor, dean of spiritual formation, chief diversity officer. I think I just messed up. They opposed my sermons, Lady Way. They said I was too conservative. They, they talked about me, said my Ebonics was a problem. They criticized me because I said students shouldn't have to choose between buying books and eating lunch. They criticized me because I baptized new believers in the university swimming pool. They criticized me because I believed in taking communion in chapel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. They criticized me because I believed, yeah, uh, in the name of the Christ. Right. Here it is, Tom. I preached that there was only one way to God. Yeah. And Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life. I preached there was only two genders, a male gender and a female gender, and anything in between was confused. 
They told me I was doing too much, Reverend White. All right. I was too religious. They questioned my background, questioned my credentials, questioned my scholarship, questioned my academic formation, questioned my sermons, my Bible lessons, my culture, and most of all, my intentions. And I was at a Christian school. My job, you say, what was your job, Pastor? They care for their souls, watch for the evil one, Stand on the wall, preach and teach God's word, lead students to Christ, make disciples and take them all over the world to spread the good news of the gospel. You would have thought I would have had a little help at a Christian university. But just like Jesus, I was opposed by those who should have knew better. I experienced the enemy's plot right. to stop the work of the kingdom uh -huh. just like Jesus. Yeah. We looked mm. at the enemy's position. Uh -huh. We looked at the enemy's plot. Uh -huh. Let me turn the light on now uh -huh. and show you the enemy's plan. Oh, In verse 26, after he creates his strategy, the Bible says then he goes and he takes with him, watch the number now, seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And Reverend Nichols, they all enter and dwell there. They, 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 they're co-renters on the lease. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. All right. Beloved, when we come to this last section of scripture, you and I see what I call is a diabolical plan of the demonic. Mm. First of all, when they find the house that they once lived in is empty, they develop Lady Wilson a strategy right. to help them be more successful uh -huh. this time. Yeah. Wow. Out. Secondly, they go and find some roommates, co-laborers, I call it, yeah. Lady Ross, partners in crime, yeah. and they join in together that they might create hellish terror in the life of a human being. All right. Now this arrested me, this arrested me, uh, Lady Bowen right here, because I learned something that demons are not like some Christians. Mm. No, they know how to work together. Oh my. Come on now. Y'all in here? They don't put each other out. No, they bring each other in. Y'all in here? They don't try to do their work alone. They believe in evil kingdom partnerships. Uh, they share a load with each other. And, and they are trying to destroy life together. Why? Because they know how difficult it is, Tom, to find a soul and keep a soul. Oh, they, they know how hard it is to keep a house and dwell in it. So they do everything they can to keep it once they got it. Lastly, I see in their diabolical plan is they don't get demons who are of the same nature and skill level as they are. Can I say some more, Rich? They get the, the big homies. Y'all catch it? These are the little G's. They go get the big old G's. Those who've been in the game and got more rank. But they go, okay, okay, uh, for those university people who watch, and they just get people more wicked. Deem is more sinister, uh -huh. more sophisticated, yeah. more diabolical. They get those who are more skilled at torture than themselves. Uh -huh. Jesus said, and then, and then. they enter uh -huh. and they dwell there. Yeah. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Yeah. Beloved, they do this because, let me simplify they come to steal, uh -huh. to kill, uh -huh. 
and to destroy. If hell had a mission statement, that's it. And I've come to learn that demons are dangerous creatures on a mission to harm humanity. They literally aim to possess, harass, influence the followers of Jesus Christ. And Jesus in this passage is exposing their plan to those in the crowd who were not aware of satanic activity that they were participating in. What a tragedy. What a shame. What an indictment against mankind. Christ came to save lives, but those he tried to reach were only interested in partnering with the demonic. Let me segue and get off my notes for a minute. It's a crime for you to come to church and fight with your brother and sister yeah. in your church. Yeah. It's a crime for somebody to come out of a cold world into the church and get offended yeah. or harassed. Yeah. Are y'all in here? Yeah. Watch out. Just because you're a believer yeah. does, not, does not mean you can't hurt somebody's feelings. Yeah. Come on now. You need to be extra careful with how you handle your brother and sister in Christ because you don't even know when you're being satanically harassed. I'm off my script and I might get in trouble, but I'll cry about it later. Right now in North America, we got a great religious divide in the church. Some evangelicals are opposing other non-evangelicals because we don't support their candidate. What kind of foolishness is that? Come on. When you're in the kingdom of God, you ain't got no candidate but one. His name is Jesus. And you don't have sense enough to know that that's a diabolical harassment and influence from the underworld to cause you to hate the body of Christ? Y'all be careful. Hating people because they vote for somebody. You be careful. Being pulled into a side of a secular debate that ain't going to matter in eternity. Amen. You be careful about digging in your trenches and hating a man who's a sinner just like you. Are y'all listening to me? Shame on you if you think your sin don't stink. Shame only if you think you ain't never hurt nobody feeling or said something stupid about somebody. Oh, y'all, I don't know how I got out there, but I feel like doing this. Be careful, be careful what you do with your pulpit, too. Your pulpit ain't never been about preaching a, 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 a political party. It better be pushing the kingdom agenda yes, sir, yes, sir. and exposing the satanic yes, systems yes, of this world. Yes, Can I say some more? Yes. All I'm trying to say is I've discovered even in the church, some people can be misguided. Some people can be misdirected. Some people can be influenced and even seduced to misbehave. Just like those in the crowd. This, is, this ain't in my notes. And even on your Facebook page, watch what you like it. Watch your comments and you jumping in to these social and illiterate debates about nothing. Paul said, man, don't get caught up in genealogies and fairy tales. You're supposed to be representing the king. And every time you misbehave, they put it on us. Even in church, some people can't help but do the work of the demonic. Not even know they under the influence of the evil one. Y'all hear me? I'm pastoring right through there. Do you hear me? Watch your attitudes. Watch how you look at each other. Watch how you mistreat each other. Watch what you say about one another. Because there's an evil one at work seeking to hurt, harass, and influence you to misbehave and to carry his agenda. Notice, I never use the word too much in here, possessed. No, believers can't be possessed. They can be harassed. They can be influenced because Satan lives in the, I mean, Satan can no longer live in the house. Are you listening? God dwells there. 
and I'm glad he'll never move out. That's right. He'll never leave or forsake me. Yeah. But I can't allow for some evil influence to enter my mind and to cause me, Lady Zuniga, to harass those who are made in the image of God. Well, just like there were several demons that took up residence in this man, yeah, we learn that sometimes even believers can be influenced by more than one devil. Yeah, I need to spend some time here. Sometimes believers can also hear multiple voices. Have multiple ideas. Take in multiple suggestions. Multiple strategies. Develop multiple reasons why they think we should do something or say something, think something, or deserve something. I stopped by to warn somebody today about the demonic harassment and influence of opposition and how it can, yeah, or may leave you alone for a season, yeah, but it always returns. Can I waddle right there? Just ask the Celebrate Recovery believer when they get tempted and go back to the dope house, slip back into addiction, how worse things can be that second time around. And you got Christ in you. Y'all yeah. in here? Yeah. Just ask the liar what happens when they keep on lying. Yeah. They'll tell you things will get worse yeah. the second time around. I'm talking about believers now. Yeah. Just ask the doubter yeah. if they keep on doubting God's word. Yeah. Won't their doubt eventually grow into full-blown unbelief? Just ask the racist who starts hating one group of people and they won't too soon start hating all groups of people. See, demonic harassment and influence in the life of the believer is real and it carries consequences. Well, I got to leave you now. But Jesus knew, yeah, what he was talking about. And because he would also experience this. He could tell this crowd what it was really all about. You see, the disciples would oftentimes, in their holy huddles, Brother Fisher, they would argue about who was the greatest, who they liked and who they didn't like. They would also try to persuade Jesus to do things their way and avoid going to certain cities to preach to certain crowds. They would also want to rain down fire on certain people groups. They were mumbled under their breath about those who would come to him for salvation. Y'all remember the woman called an adultery? They would oppose those who brought him gifts and try to run children and parents away who came to him for salvation. They were experiencing demonic influence and didn't even know it. It got so bad that one of them actually became possessed with an evil one, Judas. Judas had Satan enter his body and he slipped off in the dark of the night to betray the Christ. Judas, under the influence of the evil one, Billings, sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Judas, under the influence of the evil one, tried to stop the gospel from being proclaimed. Mm -hmm. Judas, under the influence of the demonic, turned on the preacher. Judas, under the influence of the evil one, quit coming to prayer meeting. Judas, under the influence of the demonic, abandoned the fellowship of the brethren. Judas, under the influence of the evil one, Brother Manny, he chose money over ministry. Judas, under the influence of the evil one, went out in the black of the night and betrayed the Lord with a kiss. Yeah. 
Jesus was betrayed by his friend because of the influence and possession of the evil one. Be careful, believer, of the satanic harassment and influence that's lurking to take over your mind too. Watch it when you start to pop your collar too hard. You start to look down on somebody because they ain't in your weight class. Jesus went to the cross, but it wasn't because Satan had power to kill him. He went to the cross, but it wasn't because uh, he lost to satanic influence. Jesus went to the cross, but it wasn't because he had to. No, he went because he wanted to. Jesus said, nobody take my life, but I lay it down. And if I lay it down, I'll take it up again. Don't get it twisted. Satan didn't kill Jesus. Jesus gave up his life. For Satan to kill Jesus, he'd have to be equal as a creator. And I told you that, I told you last week, for Satan to battle with God, he'd have to have weight to weigh in. No, Jesus died because he wanted to. Was buried because he wanted to. And was raised early Sunday morning with all power of heaven and earth in his hand because he wanted to. And as a result, yeah, he's giving you and I that same power to defeat satanic harassment, influence, and judgment on your mind. Family, it's decision time, I tell you. It's decision time in this dark and dying world. Will you stop letting the voices of this millennial tell you how to think, tell you how to live, tell you how to love. What will you do when the tempter shows up to influence you? I'm through preaching and Reverend White is coming in a moment, but there's a story I've told it before. I thought I'd tell it again. An old man back in the day was known for being an awesome fisherman. In fact, he had a reputation that every time he went out, yeah. he was coming back with a boat full. Come on. Came one day down to the lake and there was a fellow waiting there with his tackle box and said, oh man, they tell me you're the best in your weight class. In fact, you're the goat, the greatest of all time. Can I fish with you today? Yeah. Old man said, sure son, come on. He jumped in his little boat boundary and said, I like this little spot around here. I call it my cove. He said, come on, we'll go and throw our stuff in the water and see what we can do. All right. He got out to the cove and cut off the little engine on the boat and reached in his tackle box and grabbed what looked like was a stick of dynamite. Uh -huh. come on. He lit the stick boundary and waited till the fuse went down yonder. Yeah. Tossed it in the water, boom! <laughs> and the fish came to the top of the water. Right, right. Reached out, got his net, started pulling them all in, filling up the boat. Right, and the passerby on the boat looked at him for a moment, and when he came to himself, reached in his pocket, uh, Brother Montre, and pulled out his game warden bag. <laughs> and said, you are under arrest for violations of the California Penal Code. The old man looked at the young gang warden, reached in his tackle box, pulled out another stick of dynamite, lit it, let it go down, threw it in his lap. He said, you gonna shut up or fish? It was decision time. Are y'all in here now? You see, there comes a time when the believer has to decide Right. Who you gonna let influence you? You gotta decide. If you gonna let the evil one influence you with a secular worldview or a biblical worldview. Are you in here? I don't know about you, but I'm down with the Lord. And I'm not gonna let no devil turn me around. Turn me around, turn me around. I'm not let no devil turn me around. 
I'm gonna keep on walking and keep on stomping and walk into the freedom land. Hey, is there anybody in here with me today that says I'm gonna do it God's way, not gonna let the devil influence me in any of my decisions, my living, my serving, my giving, or my dying. Let's give the Lord some praise. Will you bow with me for a word of prayer? Our Father and our God. Oh, Father, help us. Help us to understand the sacred and solemn responsibility you've given us as your ambassadors on earth. Help us to be kingdom-minded, to have the kingdom worldview over the secular worldview. Thank you for teaching us today about the diabolical plot, plan, position of the demonic. We need you, Lord. Our world is ever growing darker. Our world is ever opposing you. And we need your power to stand and to represent you in every area of our life. It's decision time now, and some will come to repent. Some will come to confess you as Lord. Some will come to say, I'm sorry that I've been listening to satanic influence. Would you hear our prayer today and accept us back into the fellowship? We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. If you're looking online and you're here on land, would you prepare your hearts and mind now for the man of God as he comes with the invitation for a decision? Grace and joy, family. That was one good word. It's decision making time. If you've not invited Jesus Christ into your heart, today is a good day to do so. Salvation is simple, but it's not cheap because Jesus is life. You can't earn salvation. You can't buy salvation. You can't borrow salvation. It only comes to you through one way, and that's through Christ Jesus. I'm going to invite you to look at a few simple steps. One, admit that you are a sinner, and that only Lord Jesus can save you, according to Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Repent. Be willing to turn away from sin. Submit to God. According to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, verse 5. Believe that the Lord Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood to pay the price for your sins and that you that he rose again. According to Romans, chapter 10, verse 9. Ask God to save you. According to Romans, chapter 10, verse 13. And ask Jesus Christ to be the Lord. Take control of your life, according to Romans, chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. It's a simple process. You know, Pastor made my job real easy today with that sermon. He told you everything you needed to know about turning your life over to Christ. It's there one who would like to give their life to Christ today. Anybody. This will be the best day of your life. It will change your life forever for nothing but the better. Is there one? The other option I have for you today is that if you are part of Christ's family, part of God's family, and you don't have a church home, 
you need to come home and I offer you new beginnings Community Baptist Church we have a great pastor we have a great staff we have really wonderful members they will love you like nobody else will they will love you with the love of God is there one who would like to make new beginnings their church today is there one salvation church home if you need prayer we will pray for you today is there anyone who needs prayer for any situation you have this is the time to speak up this is the time to accept Christ this is the time to find a church home anyone
let the church say amen. 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 Family, were you encouraged today? Oh, okay, it's all right. You could admit it. I know that's a difficult message to hear, but that should encourage the believer. That should encourage the believer that when you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, when you invite him into your life and he takes up residence, no strong man can tear you down. You've got one stronger than, than anything else in you. One of the things the enemy wants to do is he wants to destroy your opportunity to worship the Lord. And Reverend White started off the service today and he invited you in the call to worship, to worship the Lord. We worship in prayer, we worship him in song, we worship into him in the word, and now it's our opportunity to worship the Lord in our giving. I recognize we can't all sing right. We can't all pray right sometimes. We all can't preach right like our pastor does sometimes, but we can all give and we can all give together, amen? It's our opportunity to worship the Lord today and, and you can worship here on our campus in three ways physically. And then electronically, we can give two ways. First, you can give with the white envelope. That's your tithe and your offering. That's your 10th of what God has blessed you with to continue to support the work of the ministry. You can, you can also give with the yellow envelope. The yellow envelope is our love, faith, and obedience campaign. That's our opportunity to give so that we can continue to do the missional work that God has asked us to do. The light blue envelope is the one that says, Pastor Wilson, we thank you, we love you, we appreciate you. We just want to give you something to say. Uh, we know it's tough, but you preach the word of God and we thank you. You can give online by going to nbcbc.org. Scroll down to the Give Now tab and, and press Give Now. Enter your information and bring your offering and bring your time. You can also give electronically by a text message. Texting 559-423-8885. We want to make sure that you have every opportunity possible to worship the Lord. You sang together. You prayed together. We heard the word together. Now let's give together. We've got the deacons that are walking through the, uh, the, 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 the crowd today in the parking lot. We ask that uh, if you need an envelope, raise your hand. If you're ready to give, hold up your envelope. I want to pray as uh, the deacons move to, to receive your offering. Let's pray, family. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for all that you have blessed us with. You've blessed us today with song, with prayer. And of course, the bread of life, your word. Now, God, as we come, as we continue in our worship, we want to give back to you and say thank you, God. Thank you for what you have given to us. And in an act of obedience, in an act of sacrifice, in an act of love, we come and we give back to you. Lord, we thank you for all you've given to us. And we pray that you would find our giving acceptable. Yes. God, we love you today. Oh, yes. We thank you. thank you. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. If you're ready, hold up your envelopes. The deacons want to receive your offering. As the praise team leads us as we, as we uh, give today. Amen.
chance to give? Father, we thank you for the offerings, for the tithes, for the gifts that were brought forth. We do now pray, God, that you would bless them, that you would multiply them, that you would stretch them. God, that we would be able to continue to do the work that you've called us to do. Oh, how we love you. How we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Family, I'm, I'm, I have the privilege to introduce to you Dr. Francis Hayward. Yeah who comes to bring a message about our pastor appreciation. Amen? Amen. Uh, thank you, Reverend Tom. Good morning and grace and joy to you, family. Grace and joy to you. What a wonderful message we heard today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, and I come to you this morning to talk to you about our pastor's appreciation, which we are still going to have on October the 18th. Uh, but first, I would like to read a scripture to you, and it says, Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Our pastor, his, his wife, and family, what a great faith leader they are. They walk the walk and talk the talk. We have an excellent role model, so we have no excuse. Therefore, I'm asking you to join us on October the 18th when we show our appreciation to our pastor and his lovely wife, Sister Wilson, and all of their family. And we're going to do this during our normal 10 o'clock uh, morning service, I'm sorry. And during that time, we're going to sing praises, we're going to have our guest speaker who's going to bring a special message to us and to our pastor. And we're going to have a good time in showing our pastor how much we appreciate him for all the years of service and labor and love that he has done for us and he continues to do for us. So please come out and join us that morning. And we will continue with our social uh, physical distancing. We are asking everyone to wear a mask and we're going to do this in decency and in order, amen. just the way God would have us to do, to appreciate the man of God that he's put before us, amen? amen. So on that morning, during our 10 o'clock service, uh, after we've celebrated and sung songs and given our pastor and family words of encouragement, we're gonna have, after immediately after service, we're going to process through a line, keeping our physical distances and following, of course, the directions of our uh, deacons and ushers and other people that will be assisting us and we are going to just come through briefly and give pastor and sister Wilson some words of encouragement if you're shy and you can't speak you can always just bring a card and just uh, put that in their box if you want to write it down but let's show him how much we love him Amen. we're also asking that each family would give a gift or a love offering of $50 that's not very much, and we're asking that if you want to, you can even do that ahead of time. And we're also asking for each ministry of the church to give $100. Now, if you want to do it ahead of time giving, you can give it directly to Pastor, and you can do that through our Cash App. And the Cash App, you just go on the, to the Cash App, and then you look up uh, Pastor Wilson's name. It'll have a dollar sign in it, and you can give that directly to him. So you can give many ways, or you can bring it on that day that we're going to be celebrating. There will be a table for bath, uh, for gifts or, and love offerings. And so however you want to do it, but let's just plan on doing it and coming out and celebrating him and his family and thanking him for all the work that he's done for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, and if you have any questions, you can contact, I'm sorry, me or Sister McBee or Sister Pauline McBee. She's uh, not here today. She's been ill, so let's keep her up in prayer. And I also have flyers with information that I have available for you after service. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, oh, and I forgot. The colors for that day will be all white. We're going to keep the all white colors, okay? All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Let the church say amen. Amen. Uh, Lady Michelle or Lady White, is there a Harvest Fest announcement today? Yes, come on, come on, daughter. Amen. Let's give Lady White a hand as she comes. 
Well, we're not going to let the pandemic stop right. us this That's year, right. okay? We are going to go ahead and have our Harvest Fest, and we're going to do it as a drive through this year, okay? So, amen. <laughs> so we're going to have the, uh, we also this year, we're going to invite everybody to participate in the trunk or treat. All right. So um, if you want to sign up, just let me know, and you can decorate your car, and there's going to be a contest this year between okay. all of us. So, whoever has, oh, Richard got his hand up. He's going to win. <laughs> um, so, if you want to decorate your car, the, the tightest two mothers are going to be judging you on creativity and your design and your biblical theme or, or how well you are presenting your, uh, your, your trunk or treat. And um, you can also use your sports themes this year. And I know that one of our members is... Uh, is a uh, Giants fan, and she's ready. She is going to. Uh, she's gonna bring it. All right. <laughs> so um, we also need you to bring candy. You know that's the big draw. We need to make sure, and we're going to practice social distancing while we're doing this. Uh, each each uh, trunk will be six feet apart. We ask that you continue to have your mask. You will be given something to deliver the candy into the car. Nobody will be outside. So we'll all still be safe, okay? But we want to give our kids an, an opportunity to serve, to uh, represent Jesus. I know that our, our, our jam class, that is the kindergarten through uh, second grade by Sister Zuniga, they are going to let their light shine. They are ready. They have bags to give out. They're going to say, let, let the light of Jesus shine. So we're going to be ready for this. So I just hope that everybody participates. And I, every Sunday, there'll be a bucket over here that you can start bringing your candy. Um, we need lots of candy and lots of participation. And, and uh, we're going to serve a uh, hot dog meal that's going to be pre-prepared. And Sister Cheryl's got that. She's going to need some people on her team. I need some people to help sort candy and bag candy. So come on out early that day on the 31st at 10 o'clock and just jump in. And there's there's so much to be done. So thank you. This is our largest, one of our largest evangelism events of the year. So I would like for you to join me uh, in 30 days of prayer for the Harvest Festival. It really is going to be a unique event. What you'll see is when you come, cars will come through this area. They'll have a chance to stop at every station. But around the way when they go out, the last three stations are going to be the stations of the gospel. And there the preachers will be aligned and assigned and the deacons to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ using the four spiritual laws. We don't do anything in this church without the good news of Jesus Christ being proclaimed. Yes, we want to give them something sweet and tell them we love them. But what good is it if we give them candy and they go to hell with a sweet tooth? We want to preach the gospel. So somebody say, I will be praying for my harvest festival. Amen. Would you stand with me if you can? I want to thank Lady Caldwell for being here today. Good to see you, Mother. Thank you so much for the beautiful newsletter. Wonderful job, the KWZ newsletter. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you again to the praise team and the diaconate ministry. Thank all of you for all that you do in the name of the Christ. I'm so honored today. My mother in love is here. She's been hanging out a couple of weeks with me. Mother Mary, wave at me, baby. Amen. Glad you are here. Glad you are here. Thank you. Look at somebody and tell them these words. May God be with you. This is a sweet benediction. Look at somebody and tell them. May God be
our Father and our God, we can't thank you enough for your word. Thank you that it has been a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Because of your word, we know better now how to look at this enemy. We know also, Lord, to put our trust and our hope in you. We don't want to forget to pray for those who've been impacted by COVID-19, those who've lost family members, those who are grieving in this season of sorrow. Look on them today, God. Look on our sick and shut in. Look on them, Lord, and remind them that they're not alone today. And for those of us who are left behind and remain, help us to keep our heads toward the sky looking to the hills from where our help comes from. Would you smile on us tonight? And then, oh God, bless our marriage enrichment ministry tonight at 7 o'clock, where we'll gather online for encouragement. And then be with us until the next appointed time, where we'll come back and sing together, pray together, give together in your name. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever let the church sing together Happy anniversary, ladies and gentlemen. Happy anniversary. God bless you guys. We love you. Have a glorious day.